Tony. I thought both teams were excellent. But they loved the women. And what they liked in particular was they liked the character. They loved the seat. They thought you were very organized. So they really thought you did a great job. I want to just congratulate you and Chloe. Most importantly, you won $20,000 for your charity, Thank which you. is? The Brent Shapiro Organization. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Congratulations. Good job, Chloe. Chloe Kardashian wound up getting fired by the Donald, but not before Trump promised her that he'd give another 20 grand to her charity. And this would be money from his own pocket. Trouble is in Celebrity Apprentice, it didn't happen that way. Washington Post has been following the Trump money trail, and this appears to be just the latest example of Trump promising but not delivering. Post says that Trump didn't give a dime from his pocket on The Apprentice. Other people, in fact, picked up the tab. David Farenthold is the Washington Post reporter who just wrote the piece on The Apprentice, Money and So Much Else, and he's kind enough to give us a few minutes. Good talking to you again, David. I'm glad to be here. You know, one of the things you get from the piece, and it's just Celebrity Apprentice granted, but it fit the narrative from our prior conversation, from all those charity promises, whether it be to the vets or someone else, either people never saw the money, or if they did get the money, it wasn't out of Trump's personal account as he promised, unsolicited in many cases. It was either through the production company of NBC or through the Trump Foundation, which was funded by other people, right? That's right. Uh, Trump would say on the show, oh, "This, uh, you know, I'm going to fire you now, so you can't win any more money for your charity. But uh, you know, to make it up to you, to s soften the blow, I'm going to give you money out of my own wallet, out of my own pocket." He was very explicit. It seemed like on the show that the money he was giving these celebrities came from him, and, and you know, why not? He's a billionaire. Uh, in fact, in one case, the, one of the celebrities broke down. An insult comedian, Lisa, Lisa Lampanelli, broke down uh, at what appeared to be Trump's generosity out of his own money. You wrote a piece many people may have seen where you went into uh, a deposition in 2007 uh, that Trump kind of created for himself here because he threatened to and actually followed through with suing an author he thought did a hit piece on him, uh, Timothy O'Brien, who had written a book. Well, once he sued, O'Brien said game on in effect here, and he had a deposition. In over two days, they caught Trump in 30 different lies. Um, and it's interesting in your reporting what Trump said when confronted with some of it. Um, he said at one point, he goes, I try to be truthful. I'm no different from a politician running for office. You always want to put the best foot forward. Give an idea of some of the lies they caught him in and, and your takeaway from it, given the candidate we've seen in 2016 of Trump, is it that he believes his own stories or that if he thinks he's in the area code of the truth, that's close enough? Well, it seemed like in this case he, was, he had been telling uh, falsehoods, he'd been exaggerating wildly about things that sort of only he knew the right answer to. You know, I, he would say, well, you know, I own 30 percent or I own 50 percent of this property when I really own, own 30 percent. I got paid a million dollars for that speech when he really only got 400,000. And uh, he had in his own mind a sort of a rationalization, well, you know, I only got paid 400,000, but there was a lot of promotion for the speech and that benefited me, so I'm counting that as a million. Uh, the, the, what, this commonality behind a lot of these things was that he didn't actually, nobody else but him knew the real answer. His company is very closely held, and so Trump could say, well, I own this, or I own that, or I got this much money, or I had this kind of success, and nobody knew because only he had the answer. So that's what was so dumb about him suing this reporter, was that he opened himself up to not only deposition by these lawyers, but also to discovery. And so these lawyers were able to go in and look through what had previously been closed off, the Trump, Trump Corporation, the Trump Properties records. And so their whole point of this deposition was to bring those things that they had learned and say, okay, Mr. Trump, you said X. Well, really the answer is Y. Again and again and again, confronting Trump with the things that he'd said that, weren't, that now they knew were not true. But one of the things, David, that really surprised me when I read this was Anybody knows if you've been deposed, you go in, you prep with your attorney, you can expect on what you're going to be getting into. Obviously, they knew the basis of the lawsuit. It seemed that he was going off the cuff for so much of this for the conversations, how unprepared he was for the questions that anybody would have known were coming. That's what was really interesting was, yes, because of the discovery, he would have known what the lawyers knew. Uh, and But often they could elicit from him the lie. Again, they could get him to say the lie 
and then confront him with the truth. When you think going in, he would have known that they had found out he was lying about X, Y, and Z. Uh, that's what was really interesting about this. Even, this wasn't in the story, but one of the more interesting things, he tells a falsehood that he has to know he's going to be called on in five seconds. So there's one case where they say, you know, you valued this, corp this part of your company at X million dollars. Well, we found it's only worth less. And Trump says, well, you know, really that's, a, that's uh, you know, the, num the higher number, the thing that I told you is actually right because of a study we're doing about branding that shows that we have much more value than you can see in the records you have. Well, he says that knowing that that study does not exist. So the lawyer says, well, well, tell us about that study. Does it exist? And Trump says, oh, no, it doesn't exist. So he tells that lie that only lasts five seconds. There's some sort of weird compulsion to say something even when he has to know he's about to be called out on it. Uh, I actually talk to experts in lying, people who study the psychology and the, and the sort of wording, linguistics of lying, and they were surprised by these, what Trump did, because they said often people don't want to be caught in a bald-faced lie. They sort of lie. When they tell falsehoods, they're very ambiguous, they're very vague about it uh, because they don't like having it thrown back in their face. But Trump was very unstrategic. He would say things with numbers that he knew the numbers were wrong, even when he knew he was about to be called out on the wrong numbers. And he didn't seem to mind or didn't seem to anticipate that was going to happen. In the depot, one of the things they got to, you know, the, the holy grail was what was he really worth? Now, he had said, I'm worth at least $6 billion at the time. This, again, took place in 2007. A lot of the estimates that they had gotten was numbers ranging from, I guess, 150 to 300 mil. Did they ever get to the bottom what he was really worth? Uh, no, they, they never settled on a number. Basically, what Trump said, and this is one of the most famous quotes that came out of the deposition, was, you know, my net worth varies based on my own feelings. You know, how do I feel that day? What are my emotions? Uh, basically saying that, you know, in his mind, there is no objective truth of Donald Trump's net worth other than what Donald Trump himself thinks, that you can't find a number that's, that's right if the number doesn't come from Trump himself, which is not really how net worth works, but that's the way that Trump wanted it to work. Two amazing things when you put this in the context of the campaign is uh, he tagged Ted Cruz with a nickname Lion Ted, um, and then Hillary Clinton, he, I think he called her the world's greatest pathological liar or something approaching that. And then you look at his own record and, and what the Washington Post, where you know all too well with the four Pinocchios, how many he's got, and I think sitting records of some kind. But what I would love to know is, given how much you've investigated, if we ever saw his tax returns, what would you fire through to get to the bottom number here? What would you love to learn if we ever got our eyes on these tax returns, especially before November? Well, uh, for me, there'd be two things. His actual income, what does he declare as income to the government? You'll recall that uh, Crane's Business New York figured out that he'd been claiming a tax deduction for people who make less than $500,000 a year. So is that true? Does he really make that much? And for my my personal purpose is I'd love to see what he claims he donated to charity uh, because we can't find any record of him giving any of his own money to charity since 2008. Uh, since 2009. So uh, if you go back and look at those records, is there something out there that he's not telling us or is what I've found all there is? Uh, David, great reporting as always. I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, coming up next, everybody, Bill de Blasio. He's taking another vacation and he's getting blasted for taking another trip outside the Big Apple. Can the mayor telecommute and still run the city from another city? We'll talk about that straight ahead.